Kia ora, I'm Cher and welcome to episode 3 of Waiheke Forage. I am convener for Waiheke Spinners and Weavers and store manager for New Zealand Fabrics and Yarn. A lot has been happening over the last few weeks. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a short episode with more to share with you in episode 4. And we'll start today with the adventures in Napier. Welcome to Napier, New Zealand. I've been here for the weekend for Nat August nights. And behind me is Pania of the Reef. And now I'll show you the sights of Napier. So I hope you enjoyed that little video that I made for you about Napier. We had a great time at Net August Nights. We had a little goodie bag uh, full of great little items uh, from the traders and there was so much yarn. It was a great weekend. Uh, my voice has only just recovered. I did so much talking, a lot of knitting. I'll have a little video to share with you of skeins. Uh weekend and um, yeah I also got to visit a tiny house uh, which I'll pop in pictures about that as well so coming up uh, we have some knit and crochet classes which have sold out already that's um, that's on the 19th and the 22nd and on the uh, let's see on Saturday the 15th of September 2018 is worldwide spin and public day and we are having a wee little spin in public outside the shop here so if you'd like to join us that would be great um, also Manu at Stitch and Bitch in Parnell Road if you're in Auckland you can go along and join her she's also doing a worldwide spin in public day so oh, the other thing coming up is a Tunisian crochet workshop and we are holding that again here at the shop uh, we'll teach you how to Tunisia and crochet. We're going to do a little project with cotton and linen and a beautiful wooden crochet, uh, Tunisian crochet hook. So that will be coming up on the uh, 29th of September and there's still a few places left. And let's see. Uh, so the only work in progress that I have with me today is my swancho. And it has grown quite a lot since, you, since I spoke to you last. So... This is the top down swancho you can see here. I've also changed my colorways. So originally I was going to use the, I've stuck with the plain possum here. I've used the clear view blue here, the old rose, and this is a limited edition um, green here, this greeny blue. Instead of using green stone, I've decided to use the tuatara, and this one is the limited edition from the silver lining. So I am in the pattern. I'm about, um, where am I? I'm about there. 
around the pattern. So I've only got just that much to do. It's not far to go yet. Just about that much to do. So yeah, I'm I'm living it furiously and fast because it's nearly the end of winter and I want to wear it. I might have to go to Wellington as an excuse to wear my swamp show because uh, it's a little bit colder in Wellington than it is in Auckland. I'm uh, recovering <laughs> from Khan, waiting for my voice to come back. Uh, I even had to go to Lara's house to do my washing this week because there was just no way I was going to get my washing done before retreat this weekend. Uh, this is what great friends are for. I'll uh, fill you in about what's happening with the Kerry Forest on uh, Wahiki Island. Uh, the forest and bird have decided to, um, in response to the collapsing cowrie forests across the North Island, uh, they have made a decision at the moment, this may be just a temporary measure, but to close all reserves um, that contain uh, cowrie across the North Island and this unfortunately in includes the Onatangi Reserve where I filmed uh, last my last episode. I'm going to be tweaking that episode and, and up, re-uploading it because I've decided I'm not 100% happy with it. I needed to tweak it. Just like my knitting, I can do that. I'm in control of my own destiny and my own knitting. The forest and bird have decided to protect the, the carry and the best way at the moment is to shut down all the reserves until we can get a better solution. So I'll keep you up to date with what's happening uh, with that and the state of the carry forest. There are also a lot of our forests do suffer from uh, the effects of possum. This is why it is so good. Where are we? There's some possum yarn here. There's some this possum sock yarn and in the background here you can see all these beautiful hand dyed yarns up here. Um, we recently got some new suppliers. Uh, I'll just quickly show you. So this is some of her beautiful 100% Merino with a high twist fork line. That's one example. We have Revive. Here we go. And this is another beautiful colourway. So these are some of the new colours that we have in store. I did a Prudence Mapstone workshop on Monday night. I will put in some examples of her amazing work. I wonder how many of you are out there that are like me. I don't really understand the pattern or the instructions until I'm actually following them. So as much of a pattern that I'll often read, even though I love the pattern, is I'll look at the yarn requirements, roughly looking at um, the gauge, because I kind of know how I knit and if, I'll, if it will be pretty close to the thing. Um, and I just look at how much uh, what the yarn I need, the needles I use, and then I just dive right into knitting the pattern. And then sometimes I do get a few surprises, like when I uh, knit around the bend, I looked at it and went, oh, that looks really cool, that bit looks really hard, oh well, I'll just do it anyway. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how I approach life in general, is yeah, I go, oh, I want to do that thing, that thing looks really cool, oh, there's a hard bit, how do I do it? So, and then I find out that the hard bit isn't really as hard as I thought it was, and I get it all done. So, to my friend Sarah's horror, uh, I was telling her how I just read as much as I need to know to start a pattern, and then away I go. And it's worked pretty well so far. Um, I've only just started to swatch. My patience muscle has grown, and it is more about a meditation for me now. I was very project fo focused and I had to get the project done but now I do like having the project uh, to, to do but time seems to have a different meaning to me now. I, I need to slow down, I need more patience and that 
is a thing that yeah I, I have learnt from knitting and also from um, my, my recovery from an accident that I had three years ago um, I understood for the first time why patients are called patients and I found that knitting has definitely been cheaper than therapy in my recovery and also the community that knitting brings along with it that has been so essential and yeah maybe one episode I will sit down and tell you my whole story of uh, my my recovery and I'd like to share with you um, a, one of my favourite um, children's books at the moment uh, and this is the book here Granny McFlitter the Champion Knitter this is by Heather Haylock uh, I was lucky that she came into the shop a few weeks ago and I pretty much jumped over the counter with excitement because I so fangirl this book I so fangirl um, Granny McFlitter here's just uh, an example of the illustrations here. It's an amazing book. I've, I'll slip in an interview here um, that I had with Heather when she was in the shop. I was just so super excited you wouldn't. I totally. And today it. we have Heather Haylock in the shop. She's the author of Granny McFlitter, The Furious. Is that the Furious? The knitter? Champion. Champion. Knitter. I always go because she, she's always furious she in knitting. She is. Yeah. She, I love this book and Heather is the amazing author of this book if you have not got it go and buy lots of copies i have brought two so far i have not kept a copy for myself scott got one for his birthday and i gave one to my friend skate so heather so i hear there's an end sequel coming out there is there is in march next year there'll be a new granny mcflitter i'm excited <laughs> so excited so here's I, I will put pictures of the book and where to buy it you can order at unity books and what you know what that is Blue. One of them. And look, this says, To Fairy Sky. Love Fairy Cheryl. What do you say to Cheryl? Sure. I love new books. I love new books. You love I hope you enjoyed that rather quick episode. I have a lot more to share with you in episode 4. I've just come back from another retreat, so I have quite a bit of editing to do, so I wanted to do a quick episode 3 which I did start before I went on retreat but life has been a little bit crazy and I hope to see you next time